Good morning. It is a joy to be back here in this place. For those of you that don't know, my name is Tim Evans. I was the vicar here from 2019 to 2020, and I went back to seminary, graduated last year of 2021. I've been working in a hospital as a hospital chaplain, and Lord willing, if everything goes through in the next couple of weeks, we'll be assessed to, as to be an active duty military chaplain. So that's something uh, praying about and uh, just Lord willing, that is my next steps as just sharing with you kind of where I've been and what I've been up to since I've been away from this place. For all of you that are fathers out there, ha happy and blessed Father's Day to you. And we will join with our opening hymn this morning, uh, number 908, Lord, open now my heart to hear. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For 
for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. For God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory, Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Cast out all sins and evil desires from us and pour into our hearts your Holy Spirit to guide us into all blessedness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. Thanks be to God.
Thanks be to God. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the eighth chapter. Then they sailed to the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. When Jesus had stepped out on land, there met him a man from the city who had demons. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he had not lived in a house, but among the tombs. And when he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him and said with a loud voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus? Son of the Most High, God, I beg you, do not torment me. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many a time it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles. But he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the desert. And Jesus then asked him, What is your name? And he said, Legion. For many demons had entered him, and they begged him not to command them to depart into the abyss. But now a large herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside, and they begged him to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep banks into the lake and were drowned. And when the herdsmen saw what had happened, they fled, and they told it in the city and in the country. Then people went out to see what had happened, and they came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed in his right mind, and they were afraid. And those who had seen it told them how the demon-possessed man had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked him to depart from them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into a boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. And he went away, proclaiming throughout the whole city, how much Jesus had done for him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. At this time, we will join in our confession of faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And you may be seated for the sermon hymn.
Grace, mercy, and peace is yours, brothers and sisters, and our God, Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I invite you to follow along, if you have a pew Bible, with our text for today of Luke 8. But also, I think it's interesting, you can follow along both in Matthew 8 and in Mark 5 as well, because the account that we're reading today, when Jesus heals and cleanses this man possessed by demons, is found in three of our four gospel texts. The only one it's not found is in John, and I, I think that's kind of interesting and unique. Um, and if, if you, some of you want to decide to be rebels and follow along in a different passage, go for it. I, 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 yeah. So, to start our time for today, I, I want to say about a week and a half ago, my wife and I and her, most of her family happened to be in the state of Oregon, a uh, lovely, rainy, and cool, st cool state, and it rained most of the time that we were there, and we happened to be there for our nephew's baptism, so it was a joy to be together with all of them, and while we were there, we went and visited our family, and Man, they have a lot of barnyard animals. They have chickens, and they have kittens, and cats, and turkeys, but they also have pigs, which was so fun because you don't, you know, most people see chickens and turkeys every day, but we don't, might not see pigs every day. And my, our nieces really love seeing the pigs. It wasn't an animal they saw every day, so much so that any time we walked out of the house, they were, Tim, Teresa, can we go see the pigs? So we were like, okay, we'll go put on our boots and walk through the mud and go see the pigs. To go see the, because they were isolated, alone, set apart in the barn. And while we were out there visiting with the pigs, my, our niece, who's a little bit older than two, looked to us and said, whew, those pigs, they stink. They need they need to be bathed, and they need to get some clothes on them, which just made us chuckle thinking about pigs with clothes on. But uh, that's besides the point. It, it started making me think of our text today. We experience a man who, like a pig, was isolated, set apart, alone, was without clothing, and experienced what it meant to be isolated. And I think it's something that each one of us can kind of feel today, uh, recognizing times in our lives when, like pigs, we've been isolated, set apart, alone. And there's a phrase out there, when pigs fly. But I entitled today the sermon, From a Swine's Mouth, because I think from this message we see grace come forth, that from what happened to these pigs, grace and forgiveness abounds, dear brothers and sisters. Would you pray, please pray with me? Lord, as we come into this place, we come carrying a lot of different things, carrying various emotions, various things that we've carried with us this week, and it could be isolated, and we might need cleansing, need clothes, not just physically, but mentally, emotionally, spiritually. And however we come into this place, may we know of your grace. May we know of your goodness. May we know of your mercy that extends to us. We pray this all in your holy and precious name. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, like pigs, that are isolated. Sadly, I feel in the world today, we have isolated ourselves. We've isolated ourselves saying things like, there's no help for me. I can't be helped and there's no hope. We've let the mouth say that we are alone, that no one cares for us, and that there's no help or no hope and I've, I've been away from Washington for a little bit, so I don't exactly know what each and every one of you are carrying with you today. I can imagine some loss or loneliness, some isolation, possibly joblessness, or change in job and school or work. But we all have experienced 
things that are isolating in one way or another and in one time in our lives. And, you know, I think it's also easy to say, well, if we would have less video games or if there would be less of that thing called gigabytes, you know, that it, if there would just be less of that, things would be so good. Or if only days were like I Love Lucy and the Vita Vita Vegemin commercial. Anybody know that one? Man, if things were like that, everything in the world would be so much better. But you see, dear brothers and sisters, beyond the I Love Lucy, I think the problem in, this, in the world these days is that we're not seeing each other. We're not noticing people. Whoa, oh, oh, sorry. Sorry about that. In a study by Harvard Business Review from April of 2020, it said the average person has 11 to 16 interactions with another human being. But by the way, how long do you think those interactions were? Five minutes? How many do you think five minutes? No. Two minutes? One minute? 30 seconds? 30 seconds. 30 seconds was the amount of interactions that Harvard Business Review said that they are noticing. And by the way, the study was done how long ago? Two years ago. We've only became worse in our way of seeing and noticing people. You know, I'm not perfect at this either. My wife can contest. I'm on my phone way more often than I should be. In this sermon, it's not about harping on phone or video game usage that we all are guilty of. Because that's not what the text is getting about. The text that we're looking at, we see a problem of a demon-possessed man who I would surmise has felt like we have. Has felt lonely, isolated, without hope. And he feels torn, torn apart from the family and the people that knew him. Because, dear brothers and sisters, he was left alone. He was left alone in his nakedness. And some accounts say he was bound in shackles. And that the man, he broke from these shackles. That he was forced in. And in his aloneness, he allowed the demons to control him. Which made me wonder, how long till he got to this state? How long? Was this man a drunkard? Was he a cheat? Was he an angry person to everyone? Was he like that old guy in the westerns movies? Is that you, Festish? Or was that man similar to you? And to me, the text doesn't tell us. But you know what? I want to think he was like us. Because in thinking today as Father's Day, I would like to think of this man as normal dad, working to provide for his family, with his only noticeable flaw and a noticeable one, of being that of a Cubs fan over the faithful and loyal teams of Missouri of both the St. Louis Cardinals and the Kansas City Royals. Because you know what? If I think of him in that light, then I have compassion for this person. I don't just see him as a person far away from me, but I see him as someone like us, easy to fall away and easy to allow the sinfulness to inflict us. For this demon-possessed man, he was fully aware of Christ, and he was fully aware of Christ's authority. And he pleaded for mercy, and he was given a new name, in the name of Legion, 
which a legion was a very powerful force of Roman soldiers consisting of about four to 6,000. And we don't know how many this man was afflicted with. We don't know how many demons, but what we do know is that they were upon him. What we do know is that Christ overcame them. And they went into pigs. And if these pigs could speak, they would tell of the fear they experienced, I'm sure. Because the pigs, they were singled out, isolated, and cast out. But more than that, more than that, our Savior Christ was isolated. He was cast out by the things that he did. The townspeople didn't understand, and they asked him to leave. And they asked him to go away for the healing power that he possesses. But you know what Christ does? He meets the people where they're at. He meets the man where he's at. Because as we start our reading for today, Jesus, he was going in the opposite direction. But he recalibrated his GPS. And he, was, he had decided, you know what? I'm not going to travel over to Galilee. I'm going out of my way 12 or 35 miles, some accounts say. Jesus went out of his way. And not only did he cleanse this man of his illness and his infliction of demons, no, more than that, Jesus, he restored this man. He restored this man to his own kind who recognized him and said, like the good commercials of the Motel 6, I think it's Motel 6, we'll leave the light on for you. They recognized the man brought him in, clothed him, not just physically, but mentally, spiritually, and emotionally, restoring him back. You know, Jesus does that with us this day. He clothes us the same way, and he restores us the same way. Looking to this text, we can say, man, those poor herdsmen, how many of you out here have any kind of animals? Any, any, any pets at home? Any, any raising any cattle or any other livestock? A couple, see a couple of hands. So we could say, man, alas, those poor herdsmen, uh, their sheep, their pigs ran away and they were all drowned on this day. Kind of sounds like a nursery rhyme, doesn't it? And there is no Jake from State Farm to make a claim on those pigs. However, in the noise of the vent, in these pigs being drowned, I think something can be lost. Something can be lost in a great detail here. For you see, dear brothers and sisters, an event like this, it wasn't one to be minimalized. Because we read it in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. We read it in three of the Gospels. But also, unlike other times when Jesus heals in secret or says, okay, everybody, let's be quiet. Keep this down. Don't tell anybody what I just did. No, no, here Jesus is making the Gospel message clear and loud. Go forth. Tell of what I did. And he tells the herdsmen that message. And that message is not an isolating one. We look to Mark 5. One of the accounts says, Though Jesus encourages others to be silent in healing, this healing Jesus encourages to be told. These men, these herdsmen, these owners of animals, went out and told the people what had happened. They were telling the greatness of God. 
from a swine's mouth. The greatness of God was told. The drowning of 2,000 pigs would not just be told to one or 10 or 1,000 or 2,000 people. No, no, it would be told countless times over and over and over again of God finding the isolated ones, clothing them and restoring them in a right relationship as God does for us. Jesus, he's feeding the people with his message of grace and forgiveness for this man. He's not just feeding them from the drowned pigs, feeding them with bacon or ham or pork chops, which I love, and I see some, some nods that, that they are delicious. No, what God is doing is feeding them with the grace and forgiveness the, that his love for them, his love for this man, overseeds all of our sinfulness and oversees this man's sinfulness, that he knows him and he restores him. God clothes us in our nakedness, not just physically, but mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. And we have a choice to make this day, choosing to make steps to grow closer with God and with others. And we have a means to stay in communication now more than we ever have before. I, I'm young, but I still remember the old rotary phone. Uh, and looking, uh, Nick, do you know how to use an old rotary phone? Okay, roughly, okay, you're good. Well, Nick probably knows more than some other, if I would ask some other younger people how to use the old rotary phone, we would be lost, and we would be very denied of our abilities if that was our only way of communication these days. But God shows us here in this text that we don't belong to the world and that we don't belong to technology. The world, it wants us to stop seeing people. But dear brothers and sisters, we, we have power over the world. In the, God, in the beginning, God created Sabbath. He created rest. And the rest wasn't just for him. It was for us to show the world we don't belong to you. We have control over the rest of the world because we belong to a God who sees us, who knows us, and heals us. You can look to the left and the right. Some of you don't have people on the other side, but you know, the people around you, God has given you to show us that we're not alone. We're not isolated. Because Christ, he comes to us in our loneliness. And he gives us each other. And he feeds us. Not with always bacon, even though that would be great. But he feeds us with his body and blood. He restores us. He makes us look to his death on the cross to be assured of his love for us, to be assured of the forgiveness he grants us new this day, to walk in that grace, to walk in that truth, and to walk in that love of our neighbors, knowing that God meets you where you are, not where you want to be this day. Christ says this, I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. As crazy and messed up as this world is getting, we may see pigs fly. But from the death of a swine, this message is told of a loving God a loving Savior who's not afraid to meet you and me where we are at. Christ is not afraid to meet us 
where we are in the isolating grief and turmoil of our life. May we live out the message of Christ that comes and finds people where they're at and loves on them, restores them, brings them back to the community. And I don't know who that person is for you this day. And I, but may that be our role, to be seen and to see others as Christ sees. And may that guard your heart and mind this day and always. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We now will join in our offering time. And I've been away from here for a while, so maybe somebody might help me how we're doing offering, um, if it's being collected and brought up. Okay, thank you. And at this time, we'll stand for the prayers of the church. And uh, before we go, Lord, in prayer, just a kind of prayer request for both Jim and Diane Doherty on their 67th wedding anniversary, and they celebrated that on June 12th. So we will go to the Lord in prayer and blessing and celebration alongside them. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. We make it begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs, celebrating the presence of the Lord in our midst. We pray for an increase of the world, asking that God's messengers may continue to speak with power among us, bringing us the good news of sins forgiven in Christ alone. Blessed Lord, in your mercy, Plant us like trees by living water, that we bear the fruit of the Spirit, Spirit of love, of joy, of peace, of patience, of kindness, of goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And by your Spirit, direct our lives that we live as God's holy people. Blessed Lord, in your mercy. Grant that your blessing of peace be experienced throughout the world and that we as your peaceful people shine brighter than the light of your love. Lord, in your mercy. In this time, we pray, making petition for the sick, the shut-in, and all those this day that are in need of our prayer. and that their prayers be soon answered, and that they may be supported by God's people with care in the name of Christ. Blessed Lord, in your mercy, grant that we, being numbered among the blessed, who bring aid to the poor, food to the hungry, comfort to the sorrowing, and hope to the despairing, Lord, in your mercy, with gratitude, we remember those sisters and brothers in Christ whose earthly journeys are finished and who now enjoy the promised Sabbath rest. Grant that we, guided in ways that honor their earthly lives, as we anticipate the heavenly life that is to come. Blessed Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we come with celebration Celebration for the wedding anniversary of both Jim and Diane Doherty, 
as they celebrate it on the 12th. Be with them as they walk in their commitment to one another and their life example towards you and to us as brothers and sisters. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend for all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And praying as you taught us, we come to you saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not in temptation, deliver us from evil, in his kingdom. Go in this peace, go in this mercy. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may he look upon you with favor and give you peace. And we, and we join in our closing hymn, number 643, sent forth by God's blessing. <laughs>